Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here and checking out the series. You know what to do. If you like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week, so it's a great way to keep up with your favorite artists. And I am so excited today. Kylie Rogers is with me. She is part of the cast of Bo is Afraid, which is in theaters. Hello. Hello. <laughs> welcome. And... um. And congratulations, I'm sure you're getting that a lot right now, on what is one of the coolest, if not one of the most bizarre movies <laughs> of the year. Um, I, I know this is such a generic question, but but what's this experience been for you like? Uh, God, it's been crazy so far. I mean, it's I've been getting so much support from from everyone and it's so it's so exciting you know we filmed it two years ago so for it to finally be like coming out and happening and people are seeing it and talking about it it's so exciting because it's such a crazy crazy movie yeah yeah when when that arrives and I don't know how you know the audition or whatever however it landed but what mm -hmm. you know once you finally get to sink into this script I mean like what's your first impressions my first, I remember when I very, very first read the script, I was like, I think I was just more confused more than anything. I was like, what did I just read? Like, what just happened? It was, I think it was almost, I think it was all, I could be lying, but I'm pretty sure it was almost 300 pages or almost 200 pages, something crazy, something like, you know, and I was like, wow, that's crazy. So I had to read it like I think I read it two more times. So in total, I read it three times for to like finally like fully like just absorb everything. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I think I know what's happening now. Um, I mean, I was so excited because I I love all of Ari Ari's work, his his short films, his films, all of it. Um, so I had so much faith in him to make it such a, a beautiful, smart movie, and he did. Yeah, because I mean, it, once once you see his name, you I guess you sort of know that whatever waters you're getting into, they're going to be very different waters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 100%. He's, yeah. I remember I got the audition in, you know, and it said, you know, directed by Ari Aster and starring Joaquin. And I, at the time, like, Joaquin was the only person attached to it when I got the audition. So I was just like, Ari Aster and Joaquin Phoenix. Like, that's crazy. I was like, okay, cool. So this is my dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, that's what I guess, you know, reading that script, and, and it's funny hearing you talk about it like that, like having to reread it and reread it, because, because you, you know, we know that there's movie magic, and we know things are going to be put together somehow, but there's, I mean, like, what what kind of trust fall is that for you to say, okay, this is a script, and it, it it's probably going to turn into something? Yeah, <laughs> I think, I mean, it was mainly just because, like, I, I mean... Ugh, not to sound like a like a like a brown nose or whatever but like Ari really is like one of my favorite directors and he was still at the time so and I had seen literally all of his other work so I was just like immediately like yeah I know like Ari can do this like duh like it's no big deal like Ari has this in the bag but also Joaquin Phoenix and like the cast was so brilliant all like everyone Zoe Lister Jones Parker Posey and Nathan Lane Amy Ryan like everyone in it is so phenomenally phenomenally talented um so I I had so much faith in just everyone involved in this including the crew the cinematographer everyone amazing yeah. Yeah, when you get a cast like that too I mean I mean, everybody's kind of still got to come with their A game, but when you're on a set with that many talented people, does that, what, what am I trying to ask here? Because I'm asking, you know, does that change the way you sort of approach how you act? But, but I know, you know, a person is better when their partner is better. I guess that's what I'm getting to. Like, how does that affect you in that way? Uh, I think, I mean, I've, I was obviously, I was playing a character that I've, never really played before um to like such an unhinged extent I was so excited but I was also so nervous because you know the people I was acting with were so incredibly talented I was like oh my god I'm so nervous but um I think more than anything it really helped me because everyone was just so into their characters and so like not afraid to go like 100% and just be weird and crazy and like creepy so I was just like so like okay awesome like let's let's just do this and it, it made the best working environment ever yeah well I'm glad you use the word unhinged because that is the perfect way to describe some of the moments especially that, that you get to experience 
you know, in yeah. here as Tony. Like, where do you go to unlock that energy? <laughs> I actually watched um, Blue Velvet before, like, my biggest scene. Um, because in the, the character description of the audition, it said, uh, it described Tony as Dennis Hopper if he had a TikTok. And I thought it was, like, the best thing in the world. And Ari was like, you should watch the movie before, at some point during filming. And I was like, okay, sick. So I watched it the day of my biggest scene. And it really got me into it. It, it. I was just like, yeah, let's just fucking be Dennis Hopper, I guess, <laughs> if he had a TikTok account. Um, and it was great. And I just sort of like it, my energy. I do, do a couple jumping jacks and maybe like, it's yeah, I just get it hyped up. What a place to go to watch Blue Velvet. I mean, seriously, <laughs> that's, you know, you know, you hear a lot, you know, like, I want to play this song. I'm going to play, you know, my favorite song or this song that's going to match the mood, you know, throw on some Nick Cave or something before. It, but like Blue Velvet, like that's that's like a heightened level is what that is. <laughs> it was the first time I've ever like watched a movie to like get into character. And it was such a different experience. Yeah, I thought it was I thought it was great advice from from Ari. <laughs> yeah, I get that, though. I mean, you know, we joke, you know, coming out of the theater, especially if you've watched something that's if you watch a race car movie and suddenly you're in the, you know, driving home, you're like, you want to go fast or so. Like, I get that. It's luckily I'm never faced with that in my own day where I have to get some, you know, prepare for something by watching, you know, an hour and a half, two hour movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, so then you do, you get to go toe to toe with Joaquin in these moments. Um, I don't know, like, especially like when he's in these really vulnerable situations, is that are those things that you all talk through like how how do those moments happen yeah actually it was really awesome because every sunday i believe we would um me ari joaquin amy nathan and denis we would all go up to the house that we would film at and it would just be it would just be us um and we would do like five hours of just like rehearsals for what's coming next like the coming week and it wasn't even like we were like going through the words of the scenes. We would just talk about the characters and sort of like, like be, and I don't know, Ari would just kind of like throw things out there and be like, I don't know, maybe she feels like this. Maybe she does this, you know what I mean? And we would just kind of like spitball and then we would go through the motions of the scenes and it would make everything run so smooth. And, you know, everything was all talked about and pre-planned out and, but not like too over rehearsed. It was just like very, it came so naturally when we actually did film. It was the most amazing. Yeah. But with the bullying that you do, um, I mean, is there a little bit of residual feeling after the cameras go off? Is that something you have to sort of separate? <laughs> Bad. I remember when I first got the audition, it didn't say anything about the movie. It just said, you know, Arias Rocky Phoenix. And I read the sides and I thought that I was a flashback character because I thought I was bullying a little boy. Like I thought I was bullying the younger version of Joaquin because I was like, because he, he, you know, in the script, it kind of looks like a little boy is talking. And I was like, God, I'm so mean. But then I was, I, you know, the especially the, there's a especially mean scene where we're in a car together. And um, in the moment, you know, you feel bad, but you're acting. But when I was actually watching it, when I saw the movie and I saw that scene, I was like, Ew, I'm so mean. I was like, oh my God, like, who is that? Like, I, oh my God, I was scared. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I felt bad, but it was it was all, all in a day's work. <laughs> sure, sure. And, you know, he's used to that, you know, from the stuff he puts himself through too. And speaking of specific moments, there's a scene where you're drinking paint. Yes. What are you drinking? Uh, yogurt. I was drinking, I think, coconut milk yogurt, and it was so nasty, and I wanted to throw up, <laughs> but I think we, we, I only actually, like, choked, it, like, was going up my nose, like, I was actually choking, it was bad, but I mean, it was, like, fine, but it was, like, oh, but what, what was the worst about it, I only had to do it three times, but the worst thing about the yogurt was the next day when they were filming, and I came to, I came to set for, like, a brief thing, but they were like, Kylie, go into that room. And I went to the room and it's like reeked of yogurt. Like it was so bad, like moldy <laughs> yogurt. I was like, Ooh. like the room smelled so bad. It like marinated. Um, it was a great experience. I wouldn't suggest it. I wouldn't like recommend like, you know, go chug like melted yogurt. But <laughs> it was once in a lifetime opportunity. So that, that's it right there. That's That's the beauty of like being an actor, right? Because what other job 
you know, and you have these examples all the time, but what other job? It's like, okay, today we've got this scene and this is how we're going to do it. And this is what you get to drink. And you're like, I'm I'm here for it. I'm signed up. Okay. Yeah, awesome. I guess I'm doing this. <laughs> Yeah, those moments right there. Uh, there. There are, from what I understand, uh, some parallels though with with your actual life because your your room is decorated in K-pop posters. Yeah. <laughs> and and it, well, let's go back. You have you've met BTS. This there's a picture out there. Like, is this coincidence? First off, that that this is part of the character. I don't know. I honestly have no idea because I got the part. And I had a Zoom with Ari to talk about the character um, like a couple days after I got it. And he was like, yeah, like I was initially going to make her like a stereotypically like just like weird kind of girl. Like, you know, she's always like wearing like sort of like big hoodies and like always has her hood up. And it's just like, but he was like, and he was like, but I just kind of want to make her like a normal teenage girl because they're the worst. <laughs> Not like all teenage girls, but like teenagers in general are pretty mean. And he goes, they're so, you know, they're mean. So I kind of want to, I was like, why would I make her like stereotypically weird when like the, uh, the best answer is right in front of me. It's like a normal girl who listens to K-pop. And I was like, she listens to K-pop, right? And he was like, he was like, yeah. And so I don't know if it was coincidental or if he saw that I met BTS and was inspired. I have no idea, but I did. I thought it was so funny when I walked into the room and it was like a bird and like, like K-pop band posters is hilarious yeah because the, the, there's the there's the subtext you're hoping like that he's not calling you a, a bad person from the very beginning you know why you're perfect for this role <laughs> dot 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 <laughs> exactly <laughs> also like imagining tony listening to k-pop is like the funniest thing like i could ever think of because she's so unhinged and k-pop is so like a majority of the songs are like so happy and upbeat mm -hmm. like imagining her like being a k-pop fan is so funny to me so so what's your bts story i've got to hear it <laughs> yeah um i uh, i think i was like 12 when i got like into k-pop and i got into it because i was watching there's this one youtube channel like kids react or something mm -hmm. and they reacted to k-pop music videos and i was like what is this and it was a, a band called Got7, actually. It wasn't BTS that, I, that got me into it. It was Got7. But um, anyway, no one knew what it was. Like, no one, like, when I was listening to it, like, I would be like, people would ask what kind of music I listen to. And I'd be like, oh, I like K-pop. And they'd be like, what even is that? Like, literally, it was crazy. I was like, how do you not, it's, what do you mean? Like, what? It's, I don't know. It's crazy to me. Um, And then my friend who I worked with on Fathers and Daughters, uh, Russell Crowe, who really became sort of like a, another dad to me, he bought me BTS tickets, concert tickets for my birthday. And I think, I don't know why I did this. Um, Charlie Puth tweeted, I heart BTS. And because like no one knew what K-pop was and no one really talked about it, I got so excited and I commented. I, I commented on Charlie Puth's Twitter and I was like, same with like a heart. But because I'm verified, it, the comment stuck to the very top. Uh -huh. Everyone saw it. And then I started like trending that like some random like verified actress on Twitter liked BTS and because K-pop no one really knew what it was like it was like a big thing um and then their publicist DM'd me and was like hey like would you want to meet the boys before you go into the concert and I was like yeah but it was actually the most terrifying thing because and I don't think anyone knows this but to meet them you went under underground and then they were just stood like the longest hallway you could imagine they were stood at the very very end of it and I like 13 years old I had to walk slowly like walk towards them and they're all going Kylie like we saw your tweet and I was like I'm gonna have a I was like freaking out I was like oh my god but it was great they're all so sweet um yeah great so experience that, yeah that that walk becomes suddenly a mile just to get to them <laughs> yes yeah. it felt so long it felt like when you're in a dream and like the hallway just keeps getting longer and longer and I was like oh my god oh yeah I, I remember when I when I first discovered it, and it was probably after you even, but um, because I was in K Town in New York, and and went in one of the shops, and they had all the cardboard cutouts of some of the members, yeah. and so that, I think that was my introduction, like not even musically, it was like a piece of cardboard person. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> but then, I mean, it's such. I mean, I'm not saying anything that everybody doesn't know now, but it's such a world. Like it's not just a band and or a group, and it's not just a song. It's a world. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, I think I think a lot of people still don't really recognize. That. I think now with like TikTok and like other K-pop groups are like trending with their music. Um, pe- more people know, but like I think a lot of people still don't know that like there are there's like, a whole world outside of like BTS. Mm. <laughs> like there's like so many, and it's been going up for like decades. Um, yeah, it's really funny. <laughs> And it's like a big game show. It's like a big music game show where you just have new yeah. groups all the time. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. It's insane. I'm like, what? Like, how do you, and they work so hard. It's like unbelievable. They work like their hours are insane. Yeah. Are you still like, are you still a listener? Is that still your lane? I'm, uh, I don't know. I don't, I listen to like some of the, like if I'm feeling nostalgic, I'll like put on like one of my old playlists and be like, oh, this is like fun. But I don't, I don't keep up with new music so much. Unless it's like trending on TikTok and I'm like, oh, this is this is fun. Like I like this. Um, I do like to keep up with like the, <laughs> like the drama though still <laughs> because I think it's like interesting. It'll come up on my Instagram feed and I'm like, oh, that's that's crazy. I didn't know that. Um, but I'm very I'm not so much into K-pop anymore, but I do watch K dramas a lot. They're so interesting. I think they're so great. Um, that's my like that's my thing now. <laughs> that's that's it. That's so that. That that makes sense. It, 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 in the way that you said that you're surprised that Tony would like K-pop, I'd be yeah. a little surprised if someone who stars in an Ari Aster film is into K-pop still. <laughs> Which is not saying anything about K-pop. That's just one of those like, like you're yeah, doing such like, interesting it's roles. Two worlds that don't really like go together. <laughs> right. It's like at this point, you know, I see the stuff that you're doing, and it's like, like that doesn't make sense musically in my head. Of course, you know, we contain multitudes, so you know, whatever, and to each their own. But uh, yeah, that's. Yeah. So, so, you know, if you were to listen, I'm going to put you on the spot. And I hate, I hate when people do this to me. If you're going to listen to something today, what are you going to listen to? Like, like just, oh, just like what I listen to now. Um, the, I love the Eagles. I love Bob Dylan. I love the Smiths and the Strokes and the Frights. I love the Frights right now. They're my favorite. I just listen to like band music. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Oh, you hit on like you know half a dozen of my favorite bands right there, so that's their artist. <laughs> <That's>... Awesome. <laughs> I'm in that. And, and, and talking about all those other roles, I see you know you're also doing this uh what landscape with invisible hand, which I'm so interested in what this is going to be because I, I watched one interview I guess that you all had done behind it and and hearing about these aliens and and kind of taking over the world through commercialism, I guess is a way you know to put like. Like, like, what can you tell me about this one? Because just from what I, the brief I've got so far, this sounds like it's going to be a really another interesting kind of follow up for you. Yeah, it is. It's such an interesting film. Um, Corey Finley wrote and directed it, and he's so, so extremely talented and kind hearted. Um, and it's, it's definitely, it's an, I mean, it's, it's interesting. It's a sort of romance coming of age sci fi movie with some aliens and some. I don't even know it's it's another movie that's hard to describe but it's so beautiful it's so it's really sweet I feel like it's sort of like touches your emotions a little more maybe than than Bo would (laughs) um and it's just sort of about I think on the outside it's sort of just about like two kids trying to learn how to live in a world overrun by aliens but not like in a violent physical way and like an economical way (laughs) Mm. right (laughs) What is this like? Are are these the type of scripts that you're you're looking for these days? I mean, I really think, I mean, in terms of scripts, I really just, um, I mean, I'm grateful to. I I think I just happened. I just happened to do two two very interesting movies, one after another, and I love them so much. I really like character driven stories. I think they're so beautiful. And just what really speaks to me when I read a script is just if my character, I mean, others too, but like me, like if my character could like maybe speak to like one person who watches the movie and like makes them feel like better about something or like less alone or da da da, like, then like, that's what really speaks to me and like really is like, oh, cool. Like, yeah, I want to do this. Or in terms of Bo, if a character's just fucking crazy, <laughs> that's also <laughs> what I really love. <laughs> it makes sense, and, and and you know, and and working in Yellowstone there too, because because I see all the things that you're saying in that, you know, the story driven character, and 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 how you do that. I mean, I know it's been talked about a lot, you know, how you approach that, and it's not Beth 
of old, you know, it's its own sort of thing, yeah. which is a really cool way to play that. But still seeing, you know, seeing this person going from from lost and terrified to angry and closed off. And and you're the person who has to make that bridge somehow. Mm-hmm. Like, is that a like what type of acting is that for you? Like, how do you how do you get it? How do you go through that with one character in such a way? Uh, I think it. I mean, really, I mean, I've been on it since season one. So a lot of it is like, I did actually get to grow with this character and I did get to know this character. And I think everyone at at some point in their lives can understand the feeling of like going from lost and sad and, you know, hurt and confused to just like angry and pissed off and like closed, shut down. You know, I think everyone has gone through that. So I think um, I really just like could understand and like empathize with what, she was going through because she isn't just I think I talk about this with Kelly Riley a lot as well as like she's not just this like confident like badass bitch like yeah she is but like she's also on the inside a hurt wounded like teenage girl like in my most recent in the most recent season where I'm playing her and she's more Beth than we've ever seen her before um it's still important to keep that like vulnerable wounded side of her that she's covering up with this anger and confidence and um and power um so I think it's just important to to understand and empathize and and really really think about like the fact that I have grown with this character like I started when I was like 12 I think yeah like what what a gift that is to to get to do that with with a character yeah and seriously I mean all these 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 everything you're doing is so interesting right now which by the way that be- being its own world yellowstone like are, now that it's world building on other you know spinoffs and everything do you have the interest do you keep up with those at all do you have time yeah. to keep up with those <laughs> <laughs> i haven't had the chance i have i've seen like a few episodes from like each and they're brilliant and so cool and amazing but i'm admittedly i'm such i'm so bad at like watching uh tv series I'm so bad at like starting and finishing them. I never get through them, but it's also because like, I am like, I am like a little busy. Like, I don't think anyone's ever too busy to like sit down and watch an episode of a show, but like, I just get like so caught up in like other things. And like, I just, I forget, but the other shows are so brilliant. And uh, Taylor Sheridan's like, I don't know how he does it all. He's so talented. Wow. You don't have that need for closure. It sounds like when it comes to. Well, I don't, and I think because like, especially with TV shows that I get, like, attached to, I don't want to finish them because I get too attached to them, so then I'm, like, if I finish this, I'm gonna be so sad, Mm -hmm. so if I just, I, a lot of the times, I just won't watch the very last episode, and I'm just, like, that's my conclusion, like, (laughs) they lived happily ever after. (laughs) We do that around here. On the stuff that we know about, my my wife is, you know, like, her favorite movie of all time is Titanic, and, like, we know how this is going to end, unless you stop watching it right here, and then everybody so sells boring. on and Jack and Rose, yeah. they get married and live to happily ever after. I do that all the time with movies that like I've seen before. I'll like stop before it gets said. And I'm like, the end. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I can't congratulate you enough, but uh, Bo is afraid. I'm looking so forward to the landscape with the invisible hand and everything you don't the yellow uh, Yellowstone. Congratulations. It was so great to meet you on here. And thank you so much for taking the time to talk about it. Thank you so much. It was so awesome to meet you. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you for uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.